Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the clutch, which deserves a whole episode on its own, because whilst it may look pretty straightforward, um, it's surprisingly not really complicated, but it's very sensitive is probably a better way to very uh, to very small changes in quite a few components, um, which will balls up the clutch. Um, first of all, though, let's start by uh, listening to what's wrong with the clutch. Um, when you're actually out there riding and you can uh, feel the gear changes. So if you listen to this for a second, there's a few videos coming up here and uh, you'll hear the clutch dragging, um, heavy engagement, stuff like that. Okay, so we heard how um, when you're changing gear there, it bangs into gear and um, you can obviously minimize that by feathering the gearbox if you want to. Um, and the second thing is you can let the engine revs die back down, almost right down to neutral, but that gives you a very slow gear change, which is fine um, for an old bike like this, but uh, you should be able to relatively quick shift if you've got the clutch right. So it's worth getting it right now. And secondly, of course, if you are heavy shifting and the clutch is dragging like in the first video or so, um, it will of course round off the teeth on the dogs pretty quickly in the gearbox. It also puts a lot of um, extra pressure on the uh, pinion at the back drive and all that kind of stuff. So it's a bit unnecessary. And of course it will wear out all those parts. So uh, let me first of all, just uh, tell you what is the issue. And the issue is quite simply that the separation of the clutch sandwich, let's go over here. Should we start by making up a sandwich here? Not particularly tasty sandwich, but a sandwich nonetheless. Right, so if I just assemble a rough, get out of the way, a sandwich, like this. So the problem is, is when you separate the clutch or you pull the clutch lever, this, the total separation here is only about 1.5 millimeters. Now, once you've divided that, let's make it, too, let's make it easy and say two millimeters, and two millimeters is absolutely maximum. That's perfect separation in terms of the, the best you can achieve. So it doesn't, this is not normally you'll get that. Because you've got the two friction discs in there, um, and you've obviously got eight moving parts as such, you've really got um, only 0 0.5 millimeters um, spread between the two discs on each side, making a cumulative of two, um, which ultimately is only 0 0.25 on each surface if you look at it this way. Now the problem with that, of course, is that if you do have the wet clutch, uh, 0.25 millimeters separation across each disc face um, doesn't really account for much when it comes to uh, viscous drag. So if you've got thick oil in there and stuff like that, you'll get viscous drag between the plates anyway, um, whereby they'll carry on turning even though they're technically separated, which is why you basically make the decision to go for the dry clutch. Um, right, so. Now we know we've got a maximum of two millimeters separation across this. Let me just show you how basically the thing works. So you pull the lever. This is obviously off a of BMW or Euro or something, uh, which obviously pull it in, tugs the wire in this direction, or the cable, which then comes onto this piece, put it that way around, pulls the actuator there, which pushes this inwards which then pushes on the clutch rod. Try and get my hands out of the way, there we go. Which then pushes on this bearing, which pushes on this thrust plate, which pushes on that, which pushes on the springs. There's a lot of pushing going on there. There's lots of little bits. Um, and so, right, now I should explain to you what actually happens. So when you're, um, when you're setting up the clutch itself, um, inside the actual end of the handlebar where the, where the lever goes in, there's a big screw which tightens the um, clutch lever onto the handlebars itself. And I'll give you an example where I drew this out before because the head of that clutch screw, if that's one millimeter too big, it means that when the clutch is relaxed, it only comes out to there. Whereas if you reduce that by a millimeter, it comes out by there which essentially increases the total movement from 30 from 25 millimeters to 
20, sorry, 25 millimeters to 30 millimeters of cable movement. So literally just by reducing that by um, one millimeter increases because of the distance between there and there increases the cable pull by thir by five millimeters to 30 millimeters. So if, you ca if your lever is relaxed there, it needs to be relaxed out as far as you can get it. Obviously, the smaller the hands you've got, the more difficult that is to uh, pull it, but obviously you can grab it nearer. So again, that shows you just how sensitive even that screw head thickness there is. Uh, one mil on there equates to five mil of cable movement. So if I flip it over this piece of paper and show you now the actuator side, which is over here, just wind that in a bit. So when it's at rest, it pivots there. So we can see then that uh, we've got extra five millimeter movement. So if I go to 24 millimeters, I'll try to do it the other way around. There we go, it's better, makes more sense. So I'll put the push rod there. So if we start off relaxed there, and we go to 24 millimeters, it, we can draw out the lines and see the difference. So 24, we'll call it 25 to 30. And you can see the difference just about on the total actuation movement. And when we look down here, that equates to a difference of 2.8 mm, 2.5 millimeters to 2.8 millimeters, just those two, just that extra five mil. And it might not it might not seem that much, but 0 0.3 millimeters actually matters with this clutch because it is so sensitive. Okay, so let's assume we've got all this perfect and you've got it set up right. Next up, we need to look at what actually happens when you press this together. So let's look at the symbol it quickly. So there you go. The rod goes on with this thrust bearing. That would go in there. He says, there we go. And that sits inside the engine. <clears throat> and the springs will all be on the back here, inside the flywheel. Now, straight away, you can see, if I hold this like this, if the springs are not all the same springiness, or Young's modulus, I'm going to be clever about it, then um, as this pushes, it will twist, and that will essentially simulate warp in the discs, which will cause it to drag. And don't forget, we're only talking about 0.25 millimeter per surface or 0.5 mil maximum uh, separation between the discs. There's not a lot. 0.5 mil on a disc this size is very easy to mess up. And the other thing um, is that by pushing this at the middle, it actually encourages it to be bad. Ideally, you'd want something really big and push on there. You get a much more smooth transition. But you don't so because you're pushing on there if there's any the springs are different in um, tension or there's anything grit in any sort of kind of grit or anything like that in the flywheel which catches this teeth then pushing it there would just cause disc distortion like that so these discs have to be absolutely straight there is no way around this except the fact these things have to be straight and they all have to be parallel to their center now I've created a goods clutch sandwich. Now this is, you can see the old spring marks on the back of this. Um, now this, these ones are made out of the old clutch discs. So the original ones, or well, I think they are. There we go, that style. And when I press on it, there is no play whatsoever. And I'll just move the camera. There you go, so I just moved to a better position. You can see that when you press on in any direction, absolutely minuscule amount of movement so we know those are good now the new ones okay so this is the uh, new sandwich now these discs are brand new um, from a reputable dealer which we'll probably know and straight away there's an issue and again it doesn't look like much and I'll show you a photograph of the side view But it's enough to cause clutch drag of, um, if we have to go around that side, we can just about see there that the total deformation is actually about 1.5 millimeters. But again, this thing is so sensitive that that is enough to balls up your gear change. That's all it takes. So the other thing I wanted to check on these new ones was their, I don't know what you call it really, not concentricity perhaps, but, um, just how 
you know, when you're spinning, whether they're um, parallel or not to each other, um, and also to this internal, because ultimately that's what's driving them. So I decided to make up a mandrel for the middle there, and we we'll spin it up on the lathe and have a look. And you can see on the next little video clip that um, they're just no good. Okay, so they, we need to put the clutch in now, so I'm going to go and do that. Um, but you can see literally how critical um, the whole setup of this clutch is, because go back to the original lever diagram. Got that small adjustment there, makes it not work. And it's so critical to have the maximum amount of separation between these discs that any loss, whether it's the lever or slack or this or anything, just messes it up. Um, and it does, if you look at this, you can see how much pressure goes onto this. This ball bearing has fused itself onto the end of there. You can see all the heat scorching as well. Um, even the length of these rods matters. There's, there's two, the rods are slightly different lengths, as you can see. We have a concave at the end there for the ball bearing. So uh, a very critical component, this, if you want to avoid the um, rubbish gear changes. All right, just finally, um, we need to look at these springs. Let's move this out of the way for a second. So you want to test that each one has got roughly the same deformation as well. So you need something heavy to put on there and just have um, a measure just underneath it, something as a datum. Here we go. Nice English cannonball from the 16th century. Just plonk that on it. Um, and just measure each one and just make sure one of them or two of them, they all roughly are the same. This piece of measure under there, you could go on that as well. Right, let's go and stick it in the engine. <laughs> 